you say that love is a liberation, but your enemies and critics maintain that uh, some of the practices that uh, the movement is encouraging seem to be inspired more than Mr. Efner of Playboy than by a spiritual leader. What, what is your reaction to this? I'm a spiritual playboy. <laughs> Is there something wrong? <laughs> I call myself Zorba the Buddha. And that's my whole life effort to bring Zorba and Buddha closer. I don't want the dichotomy of the spiritual and the material. I want the spiritual and the material as one whole. They are. The division creates an schizophrenic state in humanity. And all the religions are criminals in that sense. They have created a split in man. Your body is separate, your soul is separate. You have to fight with the body, you have to remain celibate, you have to fast, you have to torture the body. The more you torture, the more spiritual you are. To me this is simply garbage. Just nonsense. There is no need to torture the body. Because the body and the soul are not two things. Existence is one. Body is the visible soul. And the soul is the invisible body. But it is one mystery. Don't divide it and don't make a conflict between them. So when I say spiritual playboy, I am not just joking. That is my basic standpoint towards life. What is wrong if Buddha is dancing in a disco? It looks so beautiful. A beautiful girl. And why Buddha be afraid? Is not his meditation strong enough? that he will be pulled towards carnal lust? Is he afraid of falling back from his enlightenment? Then he is not enlightened at all. Because there is no way to fall back. Once you attain, you cannot fall back. It is your own inner being where you are going to fall back. Once you know it, you know it. Then whatever you do, that knowledge is always there. Whatever you do, that fragrance follows you. And there is no act which is unspiritual. Even lovemaking is not unspiritual. In fact, if lovemaking is unspiritual, 
then every other act will be unspiritual. Love making should be the most spiritual act. It is so delicate, so soft. But the religions have created the division and created on the one hand saints which are just dry bones and sinners. If I have to choose, I don't want to choose. If I have to choose, I would rather be with the sinners than with the saints. They stink. Sinners, at least, are colorful people. If all sinners go to hell, then hell must be the most beautiful place in the world. And heaven must be the most ugly. Because all those dead, dry bones, long faces will be sitting there eternally doing nothing. No entertainment. No dance, no music, not even football match, no Olympics. Saints don't participate in such things. They can't drink, they can't smoke. What they can do? Just go on praying and nagging God. They must have killed that poor fellow long before. But in hell, I can see all the beautiful people of the world. A Laosu will be there, Chuangtazu will be there, Gautam Buddha will be there because he did not believe in God. He was an atheist. Burton Russell will be there. Socrates will be there. Plato and Aristotle and Heraclitus All great painters, Van Gogh, Picasso, all great thinkers, Jayapal Satr, Jaspers, hell will be real company and very colorful. Umar Khayyam will be there. And all kinds of juicy people, the whole Hollywood, <laughs> all actors, all actresses, all great showmen, all carnival circuses, Hell must be from end to end a tremendous rejoicing. But I don't want to choose. I want them to mix. I want only one place 
where saints can become again alive, can start breathing, can start dancing, can start loving, can become spiritual playboys, 